I think this is my first Q&A. I think I just overthought my content as a whole. But honestly, I'm trying to get the temperature. What do you guys want to see? What do you guys want to know? So I thought I started off with a Q&A. So I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me questions. So somebody said will you ever go back to making content on YouTube consistently here we are so yes I would like to say that I I don't really see myself outside of YouTube as of right now and I want to make my content very consistently I'm hoping that you guys can see and I feel like hoping is an optimistic word for failure because when you say like I hope it doesn't you either are doing it or not. So I will just go ahead and say you will be seeing me post weekly on YouTube. So I will be here consistently. Is it hard to balance the age gap between your stepdaughter and your two younger sons? No, I think I think we all, as friends, sisters, relationships, and parents, we kind of all bring like what we necessarily didn't like or did like growing up. And one of the things that we do very consciously in our household is individual time. We have three kids. So sometimes it's like one-on-one -on -one time, and then it's both the parents with the one child, and then both parents with maybe two of the kids, two of the older kids, and then maybe both of the parents with the two younger kids or vice versa. So. Um, I don't think that is hard. We balance everybody's wants and needs um, as best as we can, so I would say no. Updated herbal medicine collection, I will definitely do that. I'm still learning how to use my herbs as a pregnant and breastfeeding mom. I've literally kind of taken a step back with my herbal medicine over the last few years. Unfortunately, certain health conditions that are not bad within my family have pushed me back to herbalism. So I potentially would be sharing that with you guys in the future. So an updated collection is definitely something I could do. Do I want more kids? Um, I want to say absolutely yes. But if I'm being honest, motherhood right now has been kind of hard. Not hard, but just I'm trying to balance self career. And it's not necessarily career, but it's more so purpose. Because I do find purpose in what I do and then motherhood and being a wife. It's a lot to be at the top of each category. So yes, but I don't know. Because the reality of having two kids is settling in and it's not anytime soon. I don't want another two under two or three under three, hopefully. But yes, I do, I, I want more kids. He loves to put his feet on me. Like this irritates me sometimes. <laughs> I'll be trying to mold that jazz, you know, just kick my foot and kick my hand, kick my hand. I'm like, boy. <laughs> and you know it's funny. Do you hear him? He's like crying. That is so funny. <laughs> How do you heal from heartbreak? This is a tough one because I feel like it kind of depends on what type of heartbreak you're going through. I would say. And this is so easier said than done, but I would say bettering yourself, pushing yourself to go to the gym or work out, trying a new workout class, trying a new fitness class, going around other like-minded people. So if that's like taking a pottery class and being around other creatives or joining different clubs and things in your community, I would say that has been the best way. I know that LA is a very unique place because there's so much accessibility to everything. But I would say is allowing your space to feel that heartbreak, but then also pushing past it and, and making yourself better. Um, I think in every relationship that I've been in, um, it always feels like the end of the world and there's nothing or no one that can be top that previous relationship that you've been in. But every time you better yourself, whether that's mentally, physically, emotionally, there's always something better to come. So. I would say stay busy with making yourself better. How is life? Life is lifing. Honestly, guys, it's chaotic over here. <laughs> I honestly am not even in the correct headspace. I'm okay, not even okay, I'm doing great on a personal level. I'm happy, 
Um, I'm not going any, through anything emotionally. I would say the emotional ups and downs and roller coasters that I'm having is more so on how I'm trying to navigate balance in myself. But life is great over here. I'm grateful. I'm I'm honored to, to be in the space that I'm in now and I'm learning. It's like I know how to answer this question, but I'm just I'm just flowing through where I'm supposed to be and enjoying the ride. How did you find out what your purpose is? So this is a good one. Um, and I feel like this is gonna be a long question because I feel like for me, I graduated high school in 2011 and I graduated from college with my degree in business marketing in 2015. And I feel like around that time, it was very trendy to do tests. Like this is a test you take to figure out what career you're in, or this is the test to take for like your personality number or your life path and like all these different things. And at the time I didn't really know what my purpose was, but then I traveled. I had the privilege to exercise my birthright and travel. I feel like when you travel, you always have a widened perspective. And in traveling, somebody asked me about my birth chart and I was like, what is a birth chart? And then I started doing my own research on what a birth chart was. And it was kind of still that obsession over like the test and the this, and if you do this, then you're that. And if you do this, and then you're that. And now, years and years and years and years and years later, my birth chart is always like, it's, it's a big teacher for me. So I remember looking after somebody, and mind you, this is after the, the going to school, this is after being raised and kind of being told what you could do or what you should do. This is after having multiple jobs in college. This is after all the prayers. This is after going to church. This was something that I stumbled upon and I just thought it was kind of like another test. And when I took a deep dive into my birth chart, um, I learned about two pivotal points, which is your North Node. I learned about Chiron and I learned about um, my Midheaven. And when I looked at those three, they had a very specific purpose for me and it resonated with me. I know birth charts might not resonate with a lot of people, but it basically left breadcrumbs for me to find out the rest. So in my birth chart, um, and just, like I said, this is just me digging. This is not me getting somebody to help me analyze it. This is not me really knowing what I was doing at the time. But I thought of it as one of those like personality or career tests. And then I started just digging into it and looking at certain things. And then I also took it upon myself to ask myself, what, I, what did I like to do before what I liked had to be monetized? So I want you guys to sit with that. Because what did you guys like to do before your parents said you had to make money, before you knew your rent was a certain amount, before you know what you liked was uncool? I remember when I started posting content on YouTube, um, I remember I went to, I think it was like VidCon or something like that, and it was a little girl who was making millions off of nail polish. And I remember seeing this little girl make millions off of nail polish because she was selling it online. And I was like, there's, n there's nobody in my family as much love and support that I'm around. There's nobody in my family that could tell me like, oh, you're seven, eight years old. You love doing nail art. You can make a million dollars off of selling nail polish. Not that a million dollars is the end all, be all goal. But I think now in today's society, we need to honor people's interests. This is going way off subject. I'm sorry, but I have to say it. Um, we need to honor people's interests. We need to honor our kids' interests because what they like can't sustain them, whether it's $50,000 a year or a million or $2 million a year, it can sustain you. And I think my generation, I would consider the last generation that like had MySpace and then had Facebook, but we also did high school and college without it, where when you ask people what they want to do, it can be such a daunting question. And I think me stumbling upon my birth chart and then also having the awareness of what I liked to do when I was a kid and then kind of putting those, to, those two together and then seeing what I also naturally gravitated towards really helped me find my purpose. And I think our purpose evolves over time. I think we have a purpose for different seasons in our life. So to answer the original question, I would say for sure, um, my birth chart definitely helped me tremendously. 
and then also asking myself questions based off of what I read, taking my personal experiences and then getting my birth chart and then kind of putting those two together and saying like, what do I have like a fire and a passion for naturally? And what am I naturally good at? And what kind of naturally gravitates toward me with the least amount of effort? And that's kind of how I found my purpose. No yay. So where did you get most of your business skills? So I would say growing up, I was around hustlers, legal hustlers, illegal hustlers. I was around it all. I kind of figure out what I could say on the on, on the Internet. Yeah, I was around people getting money. Like I said, in all type of capacities to feed their families, my family, whatever the case may be. So I honestly feel like it's in me. Yeah, it, honestly, it's just the way my brain works. If I get an idea, I like reverse engineer everything. You could actually ask both of them behind the camera. If there's anything, I'm gonna do the goal, the number goal, and then I'm gonna divide it by 30, and I'm gonna see how much I gotta make in the day, and then I'm gonna divide it by whatever the profit margin is, and so that's how I kind of like break stuff down. But honestly, it's, it's from, from young. I remember I had a dog walking service, and I've always kind of been like the diagram type of person. It's the Virgo moon from birth, that's just how I am. And if I wanted something, I was going to get it. Like there was no if, answer, but. I'm gonna insert a footage, uh, a clip of my note that I wrote to the landlord at my apartment of me wanting a hamster, and I told them like, how I was gonna do it, where I was gonna do it, how much it would cost. Even for my Christmas present, for my birthday presents, I used to write like, okay, this is what I want. At Target, it's this much. At Big Lots, it's this much. At Kmart, it's this much. And I used to put like the coupons on the back of the paper so that I, like no questions asked, um, it was really in me from young. My mom always told me like, if I wanted something and I worked for it, I could get it. Like my mom was very much like, it's me and you, we're in this household together, so if you put in the work, you will get it. And my mom made sure I always got it. And I didn't even realize, now that I'm a mom, how, how hard she worked to make sure that I was good. I would just say that that side has kind of always been in me and these pictures that I'm inserting in here are hilarious. Um, so yeah, I don't think something like this can really be taught other than the fact that it's was kind of my environment as well. And just being in LA, you always see people, they sell, they're sell they selling incense out when you get to the car, CDs, purses, uh, socks. I was always around people trying to get money. So I just think for me, it was kind of integrated into my life, my DNA. What does a self-care day look like for me? I don't have <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's something I need to be better at, but I don't really get a lot of independent time. Personally, um, I'm really with my kids pretty much all day. I don't have a self-care routine right now, but I am working on one. I'm, I'm working on one. I'm exclusively breastfeeding and I'm enjoying the season that I'm in. I know that it's very short, even though the days can feel really long. Um, but right now I do not have a self-care day. How do I manage 202 when Kai is on the road? This is a crazy question. I am blessed to say I haven't had to manage it on my own because my mom does help out and she's with me helping out with the boys. So I haven't had to manage it on my own thus far, but there is a time coming where my mom will eventually do her own thing. So this past season, I didn't really have to manage that on my own. So if you guys see that it looks like I have everything together, I do not but I also am not gonna pretend like I don't have the family dynamic that can afford people to help. And I don't wanna play with that because I know a lot of people don't have the accessibility to do that. And I don't take that for granted at all, so. Did I experience postpartum depression with either of my pregnancies? I would say no. I definitely experienced baby blues just because I think I wasn't really ready. I, I, I've always wanted kids, but I don't think anybody could really prepare you for being on someone else's time. <laughs> like when you're a mom, you're on somebody else's time. I happily was a, or am a stay at home working mom. And I don't have somebody that, I have my mom that helps me, but I still respect my mother's time as well. So. 
I think for me, just the allocation of responsibilities was really, 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 really hard for me to adjust to because I was that person who woke up, I would stretch, I would meditate, I would eat my breakfast, I used to take my time in the rising, and my firstborn didn't put, like I went to the bathroom for the first time in the middle of the night without my son waking up and being woken up for the day when he was 11 months. So that was really, really, really hard for me to adjust to. So um, no, I didn't have postpartum depression, but I definitely did have lots of postpartum frustration and baby blues. What has been the hardest part of transitioning into your healthy lifestyle? Honestly, the healthy cho lifestyle chose me. I did not choose it. I had a lot of hormonal issues, acne issues, gut issues. I was not happy, not healthy at all. And I kind of was forced to be this way um, or I would be living a life of unfulfillment like day to day. So I had a terrible reaction to birth control. Um, I had hormonal issues. I lost a whole bunch of weight and gained a whole bunch of weight. Um, I had terrible acne. I had acne on my back. I had acne on my face. I had acne on my shoulders. And when I started weeding things out and um, working with herbs, everything kind of magically went away. And then when I would dibble and dabble with cheese, which was my favorite, and bacon and pork, which was my favorite at one point, um, it would just kind of come back. So I just had to make a decision. Like, you're in your 20s and you have acne. Like, do you, is, is the cheese that important or not? So <laughs> I had to make the decisions. And it's like, I made them. I found other ways. It's really, really hard to change your habits um, in the beginning because you kind of just have, have to find your staple things. But then after I found that, I was good. So um, I would say the hardest part is just having the patience to figure out what it is that works for your body because we are not all the same. And what I say is best for me will not be best for you. So I think the patience and trying to figure out what your routine is the hardest part. Ooh, have you ever dealt with not feeling like enough? If so, what has helped you overcome it? This is a big question. Um, I definitely have felt like this before. And honestly, the recipe for me every time has been pushing myself to just become better in some way. I, I think if I am being honest though, I've never had any deep insecurities as far as like wanting to be somebody else. I've always been pretty comfortable within myself. So as long as I make myself better, nobody can beat me because I'm the only me. That's kind of been something that was hammered home in my conscious ever since I was really young. So me being my own superpower has kind of always been an affirmation that I speak over myself whenever I have dealt with those things. So when I do feel like I haven't been enough, whether that was in a relationship, whether that was in a friendship, whether that was in the workplace, I've always tried to push myself to be better. And now that I'm thinking about it, I've actually felt this a lot because I think um, growing up, I dealt with a lot of people not really validating me in a space, whether I wasn't too, I wasn't enough of this to be categorized as this, or I wasn't enough of that to be categorized as that. I was also really skinny at one point and I didn't like have the body that I had in my early, that I, I was a late bloomer, let me just say that. So yeah, I was made fun of a lot. People would pick on me a lot. But then people also would pick on me because I was kind of cool, kind of always. So it's like, I always had different angles coming after me. And there was a time that I actually did have a deep insecurity of who I was and what I looked like and, you know, what I wanted my physical appearance to be like. Looking back on it, I don't think I knew what to do. But now in my earlier adulthood, when I kind of figured myself out and separated myself from people who did try to bully me, once you better yourself, the natural confidence kind of ex exudes out of you. And when you stay in your lane and those people are still in their lane trying to attack you, you, you become so far ahead of them that they can't touch you. Some of the people who used to make fun of you, you look at them now and you're like, you could just tell how, un how people who are unhappy with themselves, how their life manifests. And not that you should ever pick on somebody or say that you're here and I'm there, but when you stay on in your lane and your intentions are pure um, and you focus on yourself and bettering yourself, that's the best way to overcome, I think, anything in life. 
So did you exclusively breastfeed with your first pregnancy? No. My firstborn got pumped milk a lot. He, by the grace of God, I never formula fed my firstborn, my first son, Kai. I pumped a lot. I got mastitis seven days postpartum. And after that, I pumped pretty much exclusively because I was terrified that I was gonna get, gonna get mastitis again. And I was also obsessed with the fact of like knowing how much he was eating. I was not in my feminine energy at all with my first pregnancy. And I feel like it wasn't towards the end of my breastfeeding journey that I learned the confidence and flow of just my body and trusting my body. My first preg pregnancy, I was definitely within my masculine energy. And I do believe that my mastitis was a manifestation of being so masculine in my body still of like trying to control knowing how much and when and where and what to eat and how much fat was in my milk and was it sustaining him enough and my body it just was too much control so um i did not exclusively breastfeed with my firstborn how are you liking your transition to dallas i love dallas i we were only there for two months but i loved it there the food is incredible I love how close everything is. There's not crazy traffic. I know Dallas people will tell you there's traffic, but it is not New York traffic. It is not LA traffic. I actually love Dallas and I'm excited to call it home. And hopefully we'll find a home soon there so I can <laughs> get settled and yeah. So I'm hoping um, we'll, we'll get acquainted there soon, but I am very excited to be in Dallas. There's no light. There's a lot. I feel like five more is good. Five more is but good. What I'm yeah. saying is I haven't read all of this. Oh, like, like I'm only at this much. Yeah, this. scroll up and see. Okay. How do you unplug from this internet space as a brand and business owner? Honestly, I have to delete it. Like this, Instagram is not even on my phone. Instagram is on my iPad, so I have to delete it because. I have Gemini placements and I like to do a lot of things at once and that's like, I just get really inspired about a lot of things at once and I can overstimulate myself and try to do too many things by looking on the internet. The internet is a very inspiring place on my algorithm. It was a long road to get to just inspiring things on my algorithm, but because of the things that I engage with, there's a lot of inspiring clips or DIYs or home things and kid things and cooking things. So. For me, I can get overstimulated very, 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 very quickly. And I think the best way for me to unplug from that is like I said, stay in my lane. My business is focused on these five things right now. Let Tamara tell it, it's like 10. <laughs> <laughs> but if I just draw my inspiration and then just focus on my five things and pour into my bucket, that's the best way for me to unplug. But it's been years and years and years and years and years that it's taken me to unplug. Um, and now as a mom, so it's definitely not easy, but I make it work and I just take it off of my phone so that I'm not mindlessly scrolling. How did you know that your husband was your divine partner? Whew. Me and this man have been through a lot. Oh my God. I, I would say he, uh, in the best way, he tells me about myself which is very, very uncomfortable. Um, at times it was uncomfortable. He would like, there was things that I would do in previous relationships where they would kind of just be like, oh, like you're, you're very masculine. Like you're very, and when I say masculine, like I'm independent, I'm opening my own doors, I'm paying for my own food. I'm having my own people do my own things. Like that's very masculine energy. And it's not, there's nothing wrong to be that, but I was also contradicting because it's like, you might write down you want a partner who's supportive and who's loving and who spoils you. But the moment somebody tries to pay for something, you're like, no, I got it, I'm independent. I'm like, I just was doing everything. I was doing a lot of things wrong. And he would tell me about myself. And, you know, I think we all have our own family skeletons. And he would ask questions like, why is da, 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 like this? And I'd be like, ooh, like we're not supposed to talk about that. And I think for him, he just put a light on a lot of different things that ultimately were dark spaces within myself. And by doing that, he was able, we were able to kind of open and deepen our connection. Um, and I was ultimately able to become a better version of myself. So I think for me, 
in our relationship, he's just cracked me open and like just. Who you are. <laughs> and I'm still learning, guys. I am still learning. Our relationship is not perfect at all. And we have our growing up to do a lot. Like we have a lot um, of the same but opposite areas of opportunity. So I think your divine partner is somebody who's gonna look at the real raw you and make you better by asking the questions and pushing the trigger buttons in a, in a place of love, um, knowing that it's going to make you blossom and make you become better. So that's a little, a little something. How do you exclusively breastfeed? Does this mean your baby has to be with you 24 seven? Absolutely, so exclusively breastfeeding means your baby does have to be with you 24 seven. I think up until maybe like eight months, your baby could probably be away from you for like three to four hours at a time if there are fruits and vegetables and solids and smoothies and stuff in between. But yes, my babies are with me 24 seven. I've never been away from them for the night. Um, and then my second born has, I think the longest I've been without him is maybe five hours. Okay, so there's a lot of Kai questions. I don't know if I should just have him be on here. What do you guys think? How has motherhood changed your life the most? Love your energy. I think motherhood, well, I know motherhood has just made me more intentional. I honestly had no discipline, no discipline before having children. I had discipline because I was able to sustain my own business and get up and do what I had to do. But as far as the way my days went, I spent so many days just frolicking and like, <laughs> having kids has put time management at the forefront of my everyday. And then also intention of like, what am I here to do? What am I doing with my life? How am I making myself better, my family better? Um, I think I always had a positive outlook, but my positivity is now about sustaining a legacy for generations to come rather than kind of what's in front of me. Okay, so how am I balancing being a mom with 202 and creating content? I have a team, so there's literally nothing without that. I would not be able to create content in a happy manner and be in the life that I'm in with the lifestyle that I have and be happy. It, it just wouldn't work. So shout out to Casey, shout out to Tam, because without them, I would not be doing it. I could not balance it on my own in this lifestyle. I could not do it. So um, the way I balance it is having a team around me and including them in my dreams, my goals, and them having their own dreams and goals and us collectively going after it together. Okay, does Kai cook? If so, what is he good at? So, when I'm postpartum, that man be cooking me some meals. Kai is good at cooking. He's pretty good at cooking salmon. That's kind of like his thing. I was like, he makes a good fruit plate. Um, I would say, yeah, salmon. That's the only thing cooked. Like, he might make a good salad or make a good smoothie or fruit plate, but salmon is kind of like his link. Will you be posting updated health living videos? Asking for myself. Yes. I will be posting healthy content or health related content, but honestly, I need to practice what I preach. So when it naturally integrates into my life, I will be posting it to share. Do you still run your own clothing or online biz? Have you continued your herbal journey? So clothing coming soon and um, herbal journey coming soon. So. Yes and yes, and I will share more of that a little bit later. Happiest moment since being a mom. The first thing that popped into my head when reading this is when the way my sons interact with each other. Um, I have very happy, loving children, and I think just watching them see each other and like try to get each other's attention and laugh and kiss each other and hug each other. Yeah, that's like my happiest moment. It's, it's so like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cooling advice for little ones. Do not get me started on this question. I, I don't have advice. The advice that I have is just hard, which is take your kids out of school, which is not doable for a lot of people. And I think it's easy for me to say, but I know a lot of people who are leading the homeschool journey um, with 
very little resources. Um, I personally am going to homeschool my kids, but I want to do it in a, a group environment. So I think it would be amazing to work with others in your community that have similar but different ways of thinking so that there is diversity within the group. But um, going back to the old way of raising your kids together and in community and teaching them practical life skills that they're going to use um, rather than busy work. This is a big topic for me, but um, and it's a topic that I'm very passionate in, but um, I don't really have any advice in the school system. Everything would kind of be out of it. My favorite herbs, uh, things that popped in my head, Damiana and Blue Vervain. But honestly, I've been a little skeptical to work with herbs. I actually need an apprenticeship with somebody who works with mothers, just so that I could feel a little bit more confident in my herbal practice. Those are the two that popped into my head. Okay, so first time mom here, how do you maintain your iron? I'm anemic and have to do infusion. Honestly, what I, I'm crazy. So I put all of the vitamins and nutrients I needed and then I Googled like foods and then I used the common foods and made them like daily foods I had to do. And then I also take a few supplements too. So there's a few things that I keep in my diet to maintain iron. Um, honestly, I've fallen off. So I would just say find things that are high in iron supplement wise and then just try to naturally incorporate those into your day to day. Can you describe a few ways you have evolved as a mama since the birth of baby number two? Femininity, for sure. I'm much more feminine in this pregnancy than I was with my first. I think having them so close together, it made me realize how fast time goes. So I have taken this journey much slower with much more grace and I'm asking for help. I'm slowing down and creating more. So I would just say baby number two has blossomed my femininity more and I'm enjoying it. What made you take such a long social media break? And another question was, why were you away from social media? I just felt like it was draining me and I just deleted it. And I honestly was to the point where I'm like, I'm not really getting anything out of social media. So why do I need it on my phone? If I'm not giving parts of myself to the community that's asking for me and I'm not posting, but I'm not consuming content that's really making me feel alive, like why am I here? So I took such a long break and just because I was trying to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be and how I wanted to show up in the world. Have you thought of starting a Patreon for us support to connect with you? I definitely want to create some type of outlet where we can connect on a more personal basis. I haven't figured out what way that is though. Um, Cause I would like to do tours and meetups and like motherhood. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. I just don't really know of a platform where I can kind of figure out where everyone is in an organized matter. So if you guys know of any like platform where communities can communicate, but also kind of figure out where everyone is so that tours and meetups can happen, share those down below. But um, Patreon's not my first first on the list, but I'm, I'm open to kind of whatever um, platforms kind of check all of my boxes. So for mommy content creators on balancing both, um, I personally think if you're comfortable with sharing your authentic self and your authentic self being a mom online, that's great. That's honestly not for me. I like to separate my kids from my online presence. So it's a little bit harder for me to balance them. So if you're like me, I would say you definitely need to hire somebody to help you. If you're not like me and you do want to kind of post your day today and you want to share the raw authentic journey of motherhood, then I would just say, just post what's authentic to you and what makes you vulnerable or share your vulnerability because that's kind of the accounts, the motherhood accounts that don't have a social media presence outside of the mom account. I really connect to people who are just vulnerable and share like what their kids are eating. That's kind of how I connect to it. So I would say by balancing is take the breaks that you need, get the help that you can and try to wake up like an hour earlier or stay up an hour later. Um, so that you can do what you have to do. For me, definitely waking up earlier um, makes me have a better balance, um, work-life balance. Can you make a video on spirituality in your journey to getting to where you are? 
Um, I definitely can. I feel like a spiritual journey is never ending. These type of things are tricky because you don't, it's kind of hard. I can do something though. If you can actually elaborate on these type of questions of what you guys kind of want to see as far as my spiritual journey is, I would be happy to share, but definitely do ceremonies if you can. Um, ceremonies are, whew, are um, a journey, but um, I definitely can make more content on that specifically. How's the journey been so far as a mother, aside from being a mother? I think motherhood has kind of just put more of a spotlight on my true self. So although motherhood is a completely separate journey, it's made me a little bit more selfish as myself because my time is so limited to just time management. Time management has been the biggest thing and then femininity. So motherhood, I think I kind of answered enough questions in that, but motherhood has just taught me to be very precious with my time, ask for help, seek community, create community, be around people, be around your tribe because motherhood could be very 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 lonely so i think motherhood for me has just made me a better woman how do you deal with anxiety this might be an unpopular opinion but how i dealt with my own anxiety was actually um vitamin and nutrient um balancing i was very anxious for a very short period of time but i didn't realize i had a crazy deficiency um that was actually messing with my mentality so um, I know it's a very unpopular opinion and a lot of people don't like to hear that answer. But in my case and in cases of many others, sometimes anxiety is more so a mineral or vitamin deficiency more than it is anything else. Um, what you can do for that is you can go to your doctor and you can ask for blood work to be done. Um, you want to check for um, all of your vitamins and nutrient levels and then also your heavy metal toxicity. Um, when I did that, six years ago, literally my whole life changed. So I would say that's kind of like the basis. And then from there, um, you can kind of figure out where the anxiety stems from if it's not from a vitamin or nutrient um, deficiency. And like I said, I'm speaking from my case. I'm not speaking from the cases of others. And I don't want others to think that I'm being insensitive about their experience. This is just my personal experience. How do you heal your chakra? So I was actually getting Reiki done. And like I said, even with the birth chart earlier in this video, Reiki was more so the catalyst for the breadcrumbs that I kind of had to pick up. So at one point I had a extreme blockage in one of my chakras. And after that, I just started researching in that particular chakra and I started doing things within that chakra that would heal that. So I was eating those color foods. I was doing those chakra types of things within that chakra. Um, so for example, if it's your heart chakra, I was eating a lot of green foods. I was doing a lot of things that made my heart happy. And as corny as it sounded at the time, I was doing it and it was working. So I couldn't knock it because it was working for me. Did you use the same midwife? Yes, so Rasha is my life midwife. Um, Rasha is, um, was once um, Crimson Fig midwifery, is now branded gathered grounded midwifery and yes I had her and she was amazing and I will do a birth video I don't know if it's going to come out before or after this but a birth video will be present if it is already up you can catch it here in the corner wherever the corner is um, and you guys can watch that video what was the process for creating accepting and living presently in your dream life I honestly couldn't have dreamt the, the life that I have now I think the basis of everything that I've ever done is just making myself better. Whenever I make myself better, better is kind of attracted to me. That's just on a work level, friendship level, platonic, romantic, um, even in the same relationship. You could have the same relationship and it can be very, very boring. But when you better yourself within that relationship, your partner can also better themselves. So um, I think it's an ever evolving relationship that you have just in life period is just constantly progressing but also not always fixating on the next level as well so there's a very delicate balance that you have to be in for that um so there's a lot of questions about mr irving in here so i will open up the opportunity for him to actually film this with me um 
as much as I am sharing, I am definitely keeping things private still. So I'll see what works for us and our family, but I'm gonna ask him these questions and see if he's comfortable with answering them himself. He actually is way more open than I am, so I don't know if you really wanna have him sit down and speak. Um, but yes, um, this is just the first Q&A. We might do another one. Maybe we'll do another Q&A just with just him and I. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for answering or asking me these questions. Thank you guys for participating. And I will see you guys on the next upload. Bye.